today we are talking about five millionaire habits that changed my life. Did you know a 2017 Fidelity research study found that 88% of millionaires are self-made and do not inherit their wealth? Let's learn from them today and incorporate these habits into our everyday life. Stay to the end where I share the most important habit that changed my own life. Hi, I'm Jessica and I love talking about financial freedom after experiencing burnout early on in my pharmacist career. On this channel, I share about passive income and simplifying. I also share openly about my burnout story and how we paid off massive student loan debt make sure to watch that video as well. A 2017 Fidelity investment study found that over 88% of millionaires are self-made and did not inherit their wealth. It was through determination and consistency that they grew their own wealth and we can learn from them today. The first habit, simplify your life. You know that I'm big on this topic and it was through my own burnout journey that I learned how to simplify my life in four different areas from physical clutter to mental clutter to emotional clutter and spiritual clutter. Simplifying our life in an intentional way can be really life-changing. No, it does not happen overnight. It is a process to address these different types of clutter in our life and simplify it with joy to see what brings us joy each day. But going through that journey over several months is really helpful and can be life-changing for us. It can free us up to know what our value systems are, make quality decisions based on them. And this is part of my burnout doctor method of how you really clarify your values and your why system and why you get up each morning and then simplify your life and then align it all together for work-life alignment. And when we go through this process, it can be really helpful to know where to focus our energy, where to focus our time and how to make decisions align with our value systems. So simplifying our life can be a big component of knowing where to focus our attention and where to know where to focus our financial health. You can watch that video on four areas of clutter in our life and how it affects our decision making and how it affects decision fatigue or mental overload, that brain fog we have at the end of the day. And overall, you know, freeing up our mind to make quality decisions so we're not coping with burnout through shopping mechanisms or just really frivolous financial behaviors can be really helpful at a young age so that we educate ourselves and are able to then have this financial well being as part of our lifestyle. You know, the less complicated I made my life by simplifying, the more productive I was, the better I was able to make decisions. And overall, it can just change how we perceive life. The next habit is putting a value on our time. Now we all have the same amount of time day to day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's really our most valuable resource. So being able to put a value on your own time, whether it's a value of what's your hourly rate or what's your daily rate. And this is really important to start thinking about because a lot of times we don't realize it's more than just our hourly rate or salary that we're paid at our nine to five type of job. It also includes how we're paid our health insurance insurance benefits, our retirement benefits, our sick and vacation time, and how we value our time when we're doing different tasks, whether it's doing tasks related to laundry or cleaning up or cooking or investing in a new small business, our time is valuable. So how do we want to spend our time? Learning how to put our time in perspective can be really helpful, whether it is, you know, daily tasks like laundry and cooking and cleaning or it's small businesses like editing a podcast or YouTube video or it's thinking about oh I want to buy that new winter coat or those new shoes for something having a value of our time can see how we're spending money in relation to our time value so let's say if you are calculating your time and it's worth a hundred dollars an hour or worth $300 an hour. That means if we are splurging on a new pair of shoes for $100, that's an hour of your time that you need to work for it. And this can be really helpful to take a pause before we buy something or before we decide to do something related to how much time value and benefit we'll get out of it. The next habit is don't be afraid of failure. A lot of times we're afraid to start a new business or new venture to diversify our income streams because we're afraid of failure. And a lot of times we are able to grow wealth and become millionaires because we're not tied to the traditional corporate ladder and we're able to take more risks with businesses and with other income streams before you're tied down to children and families and different responsibilities you might have. And I like to also think about the Thomas Edison example where he had a thousand different failures before he was successful at inventing the light bulb. And a lot of inventors have so many failures before they make it big with one big invention. And we just don't really talk about their 
failures before the invention they're known for. And I think this is really important in terms of failing forward and learning from those and continuing to consistently try and innovate and think outside the box. The next habit to have is being frugal with your money. The less you spend, the more you can save. And the more you can save is really important because we talk about savings rates towards financial independence, retire early. You can learn more about that in this video. And it's not about how much you're making, it's about how much you're saving and that savings rate to go along with it. And then the more you're saving, the more risk you can take because you're not living paycheck to paycheck and you're able to take a risk if you're starting a new small business or a new way that you're earning income and diversifying your income streams. The next habit is surrounding yourself with people who inspire you and challenge you and help you along your path. And a lot of times we look at the quote about how you are the sum of the five people you surround yourself with. And this is really important because the more we surround ourselves with people who are going in the direction we want to go in, whether it's a business direction or eco-friendly living or financial freedom direction, the more we are emulating some of their behaviors or their habits. And being able to surround ourselves with other people who are on a financial freedom journey or are really eco-conscious can be helpful for us to become those things as well. So thinking about who are you surrounding yourself with and do we need to spend more time with certain people and less time with other people in our lives? You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you're surrounding yourself with people who are barely scraping by and charging a lot of things to credit cards and going lots of vacations and experiences and overall living paycheck to paycheck, you might be enticed to emulate some of their behaviors. And this is a wake up call to think about your own financial freedom journey and how you want to surround yourself with people who might be looking at budgets and looking at working less years and how retirement is a number and not an age and just reevaluating how you spend time with different people in your life and what kind of perspectives or opinions you take into consideration when you're making a decision, especially related to your financial well-being. What was the most helpful habit in my own financial freedom journey? I think the most helpful one was simplifying my life. And this is because I think simplifying really helps with our burnout prevention, burnout recovery process. And it really helped me take a step back and see what was most important in my life, how I wanted my, to live my day-to-day -day life and what was most important, you know, things around me, people around me, that mental clutter around me. And it made me get really intentional with how I live day-to-day. -day. I think simplifying just helps us reevaluate what life means to us and the purpose behind it. And I hope that this is inspiring to you on your own financial freedom journey and how you're intentionally and joyfully living life as well. Make sure that you're watching our other videos and downloading our resources linked below. Until next time, cultivate joy.